Omega Katana. Yo, my fellow Katanas, welcome back to the Omega Dimension. This is your boy, Omega Katana, or Omega 13 for short, telling, telling you about my thoughts on video games these days. Look, I'm a gamer. I love video games. I love playing video games. I love talking about video games, so on and so forth. And the reason why I'm not that hyped of the current gen or the PS5, Xbox, Series X gen, why? Because, simple, the games don't look interesting, it's like copy and paste of one another, people are not even trying anymore, people want to like impress other people but not gamers or their, let alone their audience, and, and the push towards live games, yes I said it, live games. Games. And that is not a good sign right there. Because let me just tell you. I went on a tantrum on my last recording. About my problems with live games. That you always have to be online. And that's not the whole point. The whole point is you're playing a game. On a, imagine you're playing a game on a, on a cloud. And you have terrible, sucky internet. And you kept losing matches because the game, the matches lag. Your in or your inputs delay. Due to like UDP and ping not traveling fast enough due to your connect, latency and your connection of your internet. As a whole. And that is my first pet peeve of it because... It gives the enemy the advantage, your opponent the advantage due to he or she got better internet. Yes, got better internet than you. You might be a better player, but your ping and your and the rapid elect elasticity involved gave you a major disadvantage to you, a major disadvantage to you. And, and vice versa. Because. Because. I don't want to. Let me just say this for the people who are not technically inclined. That. Ping. Is like the. 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 the, the measure in seconds when you press a button. Which is UDP when an. When an action or. Or a. Piece of data flows through the internet by time. And it relates to first person shooter games like Call of Duty or fighting games like Street Fighter, King of Fighters, Guilty Gear, UFC, EA UFC, whatever. And every time you every time you go in a match, the match lags, you get booted off the match, you get penalized, or you lose the match. In a embarrassing way because your internet speed sucks. Simple as that, kids. Simple as that, my fellow katanas. Another thing is preservation. What happens if you enjoy a live game that you downloaded off the net, requiring you internet all the time to play it? When the game goes down due to like it failed or it went under sales expectations. You can't play the game anymore. There's no single player game. There's no single player mode. There's no like uh, offline mode where there's like one server or two. You just get your friends that you made over there and have a private match whenever you want. But nope, the game shuts down, closes. You cannot play the game anymore. Even though you spent a lot of time and money on optimal... And on stupid cosmetics, whatever. Ver. And you can't play the game. And, I, and let me tell you one certain game called Hawken. Say what you want about that, but it's the closest game that you play a first person mech, modern mech warrior game. Or gun, or a, or Titanfall clone, or whatever. I enjoyed playing that game. 
I won. I lost a lot of matches, but won some. But guess what? I can't play the game, the original anymore, due to the fact that they shut down their servers, meaning they shut down the game completely. You can't play it anymore, which is sad, in my opinion. And you just you can't preserve the game anymore because its servers went down. You can't play it anymore. They locked it down. The game is like a brick now. But hey, it's the future after all. Everything's going to be on the cloud. So you don't have to like download it to your console. If the thing fails, well, you just wasted money in the future. Another thing is that people will miss out the experiences on old games. Yes, I'm sounding like a freaking boomer right now, but hear me out here. This whole like live service cloud in mandatory 24-7 internet plan for games is going to be terrible in the long run. Yes, it's going to make some quick bucks and think and have the illusion of being in the future. Everybody has can game on the cloud and don't have to worry about console power and whatnot. Dude, for example, if you want to upgrade to like have better graphics or better or better programs to run for future programs, it might be a good idea to update your computer and your systems. Same thing happens to games too. You must update them every five to four, four to five years or six because what I just said before. Everything needs to be updated to stay up to date to play the latest software as well as to keep up with the times. But I think it's like a lazy way to not develop consoles anymore as a whole. People don't want to make new stuff anymore. But except if you if, if they want to make money the quick and easy way. Simple as that. Look, I used to be looking forward to new technologies and gaming in the video game industry, but this will be one of the problems that will cause a second gaming crash if they continue with mandatory 24-7 internet slash some games going on the cloud to save this space. There's an internet digital storefront like Steam Store, PSN, Xbox Live, Nintendo eShop, you play so on and so forth. And you're telling me that you don't you don't want to like upload it to that store, but you want to keep it in the cloud? That doesn't make sense. For example, when people got pissed off that Kingdom Hearts, the Kingdom Hearts collection for the Switch is gonna be on the cloud. Here's the funny thing. The Switch is able to play PS2 games. And Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, Birth by Sleep, Dream Drop Distance can be played on a Switch if it's able to locally or by hacking your console. But but pretend hacking your console exists. Pretend those games are able to play on the Switch. Which it can. From your 3DS games... Your PSP games, the PS2 trilogy, that could be played on the Switch. Kingdom Hearts 3, on the other hand, get a PS4 or so. But, but on the, but they answered, they gave, Square Enix gave what the fans want via cloud, which is like for an RPG, a pretty bad idea. It's a bad idea enough for a fighting game and a first person shooter game that we could barely even perform in a successful basis. But due to like events like elastic, rapid, rapid elasticity and ping, which involves UDP as well and input time. For, let me just say the quick example of rapid elasticity in cloud terms. Rapid elasticity 
for sure is like when an action on the cloud you perform like clicking a button or so reacts in a in real time when you click on this controller here the cloud put the program in the cloud reacts to that button command in real time like you pressed it just a nanosecond ago but due to games like call of duty or to kick and king of fighters for example better term street fighter or so requires like i said millions of times button commands reaction time those games require utp to react in a real time which ping which allows which i'm not good with measurements which ping is the measurements of seconds you press a button or, or do perform an action which which if you put a, it's bad enough we have like you download the game or bought it and the internet connection sucks but it's on the cloud that's like mandatory 24 7 you don't even have it on physically or digitally on your console which is requires more internet bandwidth and latenticity which is more money on and strength and and strength on the servers not strength I forgot the term, but I'm not speaking right right now. But tons of weight and load on the servers. There you go. Which requires a lot of money and resources to keep up and running and maintain in a proper state. Which is a bad idea if there's a lot. And that's what if it's if you have a lot of complaints, that's on you if you want to put your game on the cloud to save money. Look, it's not, like I said before, it is not Adobe Premiere, it is not Adobe Photoshop, it's not Microsoft Word or Google Docs or PowerPoint. It's a freaking video game that requires real-time seconds and reaction commands. When you press a button, it must react at the same time you press the button. And as a result, you lose a match or your opponent loses the match because of internet speed and bandwidth as a whole. But hey, the game studios want to save money and cost to be half, half butt to so, so to say the least, we could not, we could put the least amount of effort and not just like developing the game. But also distributing it as well. Which which I have for certain. Due to all these incomplete games. My third point here. That many games are becoming. Releasing, out, releasing that are buggy and glitchy. To the point back in the day. It is considered embarrassing and unacceptable. Imagine if you're a video editor. And you. And you rush to a video editing job. And you release the video on the internet. Yes, on the internet. And the titles are delayed. The fades are incorrectly placed and timed. There's some bit a bit a lot of jump cuts. So on and so forth. You got an inferior product. And if your boss or your supervisor catches that, guess what? You have to do it again. But with these game developers, they get a free pass. No, no, no. You don't get no free pass. That's why the gamer is making fun of your apologies because it is unacceptable. Another example. You come to a nice restaurant. You want to eat a nice juicy burger or juicy steak if you want to be like Andrew Tate or so. And you want, and you paid the money to get the steak, and guess what? Your j your steak comes out raw and pink, or worst worst case scenario, burnt. It's black. It's beyond well done. It's burnt. And there's and the were and the chefs and the waiters are suspecting you to suck it up and accept it. That oh, I'm sorry. We should do the. We should we, we we should never do this again. No no no. You had you done this not just once, twice, or three times. You, you did it billions of times with 
different amounts of people. You know, and as a result, you know, of your the, the restaurant's reputation will be in, in shambles and in flames because of rumors and reviews and experiences of the people that came to that restaurant having their food messed up as a result. And someone who's in charge of the rate waiters and chefs is going to be fired. And that is not just one restaurant. It's multiple restaurants in a row releasing half-butt titles of video games with poor graphics, clipping in the walls, so on, so so forth. Bunch of bugs and glitches telling you to like, hey, we got like, mm, we got like patches in one. You can patch it in later in a future update. People don't have good internet to download a 100 gigabyte or 50 gigabyte or 20 gigabyte update. People, no one has that type of internet for that. And they are suspecting you to suck it up and just accept their apology for their Terrible workmanship. They're poor craftsmanship. But I think this video is going on too long. Because I can go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. But it's like to 16 minutes counting. As of recording of this video. But I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below the video. If I miss some, some parts, I'll make a video on those parts. I cannot wait to see your comments below the video in the comment section. Don't forget, if you like the enjoy, if you like or enjoy this video, please leave a like. And if you enjoyed my my video, check out my other videos and my Omega Dimension podcast featuring McKenzie critiques and Mad Matt, my fellow katanas or knights. And don't forget to hit that red, big red, shiny button so you can be a member of the, a member of the Omega Dimension. And don't forget that blue bell so you don't miss any videos of, videos, because YouTube is being a pain in the butt right now when it comes to subscribe, subscriptions. Until then, Pete, my fellow Katanas, this is, your, this, is, this is the head knight, guardian protector of the Omega Dimension podcast and the Omega Dimension as a whole. Wishing you a, a great day and sayonara.